Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's great that all the participants came back with the same exhilarated energy. Hope all the participants have gained wonderful of knowledge on the topic Recondite Revelation, that is self discovery by Dr. P. Madhurima Reddy, CEO and founder and entrepreneur of Peak Performance, international trainer and Lab Inspired International Training and Solutions LLP. May we have everything in our life good knowledge, money, friends, fame, everything. But we see that in spite of all that, people are not happy because they could not able to understand themselves, their motivations, goals, not able to take and make good decisions. This is because of lack in critical thinking. It says that critical thinkers are happy people. There is a much thought that it has been said throughout the centuries in praise of critical thinking. People understand better themselves. But in today's busy schedule life, we fail to think and face many pertinent questions like where I'm going, what's happening, where am I seeing, why it is important, who is affected by this and why I am affecting. So today our resource person, <coughs> Dr. Amri Saxena, Center for Sponsored Research and Consultancy from IIT Tirupati will guide us on how we can think creatively outside the box and how to become more independent, self-directed learner and how to evaluate critically what we are learning and how to avoid in making foolish decisions. So before uh, going to uh, straight away to the topic, let me uh, take a privilege to introduce our today's resource person. Mary Curie Scholarship Awardee Dr. Amri Saxena is a pharmaceutical professional with significant experience and expertise in biopharmaceutical cell line development and cell culture processes. He is a molecular cell biologist and biochemist by training and began his industrial career with novel biological discovery. In his industrial career, he spent considerable time in miniaturing and automating cell-based bioassays and in developing screening technologies for multiple novel biologic entities, that is NBEs. He did PhD in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology in Virtual Center for Experimental Biomedicine, University of Würzburg, Germany. He did his postdoctoral fellowship with the medical school in the University of Tübingen, Germany. He has more than 16 years of postgraduate and R&D experience with 8 plus years of proven leadership experience in the biopharmaceutical and biotechnology industry. He has been as a principal investigator, Institute, Institute of Physiology, University Medical School, University of Tübingen, Germany from 2010 to 2011. He transitioned into a scientific leadership role focused on developing cell lines for therapeutic proteins like biosimilar and novel monoclonal antibodies, bispecific and single chain antibodies resulting in the commercialization of several engineered host cell lines. He led a cross geography and cross cultural team of R&D scientists with a primary focus on biopharmaceuticals biopharmaceutical cell line development and early stage cell culture optimization projects. In addition to the techno manager role at Pfizer, he also worked as program director for two biosimilar molecules and involved in managing a large cross geography and cross functional team of professionals. He is recognized as an effective leader with strong communication skills and have experience in building successful teams and managing multiple projects to completion while meeting all deliverables within the expected timelines. He has also contributed considerably and managed CGMP, tech transfer and cell culture process characterization for multiple biologics. He is a keynote speaker, guest speaker, invited talks and presented more of his research papers in India and in abroad countries like Germany, Netherlands and many more. 
He published more than 12 of his research papers in the various international journals. He took a patent right on design of expression vectors for high yield production of biologicals, which is patent filed in US and India. He got many exemplary awards, such as the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, India and University Grants Commission, India awarded the Junior Research Fellowship eligibility for lectureship award, awarded the Junior Research Fellowship from Indian Council for Medical Research. He also granted awarded with the Mary Curie Scholarship for invited talk at 13th Euro Conference on Optosis conducted by European Cell Death Organization in October 2005. He also awarded with the German Research Council Fellowship Award for Graduate Studies. He trained at Bach, Mumbai for eligibility to be appointed as Radiological Safety Officer RS4 at any institute and set up a radioactive laboratory. So we welcome you, sir, and we are eager to listen your words. Uh, sir is going to deliberate on the topic, elucidated evaluation, that is about critical thinking. Sir, over to you, sir. Thank you, Professor Vanishri. And um, first of all, um, uh, a big thank you to uh, your convener and to your organization, SVD, and um, also to the AICT for organizing this kind of an informative session. I was going through your brochure and I figured out that uh, this is something really good. And I, I recently I learned while when I was waiting for this talk to happen, I realized that uh, right now we have a count of almost 56 participants. Uh, joining this and I am being told that uh, there are a, a, a more number of bigger number of participants uh, are listening it uh, live either on YouTube or they would listen it later after the session. So certainly that's a huge coverage and um, I think I would like to welcome all you audiences that uh, you are fine and um, I am also being told that most of you are academicians involved in teaching either technical subjects or um, fundamental sciences or humanities or mathematics and um, something which is really I'm honored for that and uh, really thank you for finding your time here and um, um, yeah so I would like to make it definitely a more of an interactive session and then rather making a lecture with rhetoric because uh, that we all are used to as academicians and um, like um, Professor Vanish mentioned that uh, my background is actually from drug discovery and uh, recently I transitioned into a more of an R&D manager management role where I'm involved in managing the projects at IIT Tirupati in, 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 in different uh, positions. And also we have been involved in uh, setting up uh, new bio incubators or uh, startup entrepreneurship. So this is what I've been doing at IIT Tirupati. And uh, essentially, since I like mentioned that uh, my background is drug discovery, so uh, something called as a critical thinking, a logical thinking is something which uh, was a prerequisite for my job. And uh, simply, I by transition. So I was uh, like Professor Vanishri just now mentioned to you that I was actually in an, uh, working as an academician in Germany, and um, I had was running my own lab and um, with my own uh, graduate students. But then I realized that uh, maybe I can apply my thoughts better and apply my thought process better if I am into a drug discovery kind of an organization where essentially more of a critical thing, thinking, lateral thinking is required there. So, of course, it's required everywhere. That's what I will prove you by the end of the talk, that today's session, that it's required everywhere in every walk of life. But um, from my professional perspective, I thought I would fit there better, so I transitioned into the industry. And um, uh, thankfully, I have, um, like, able to contribute also. So I have uh, four discovered, my team and my team have discovered four oncology drugs, which are now entering the market. Uh, some have entered, some are entering, actually. So that's something, um, uh, I think it's a good um, contribution there. And I think, uh, yeah, without wasting much of your time there, uh, let's go ahead with the slide show. So, Professor Vanishri, can we go ahead with the slides? Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you able to see the screen, sir? Uh, so before we start with this session, uh, yeah, I can see that, man. Yeah, okay. I can see that. Yeah. So I would say before we start with the session, 
uh, I have a request. So in case if you, I'm I'm continuously watching the chat box, and in case if you have certain questions, please do type in. And um, or if you want me to pause for a second and have a discussion, I would be very happy. To do that. You need not wait for the end of the talk for a Q and A. Of course, we will have a Q and A and discussion session at the end of the talk. But uh, certainly, if um, something comes up in your mind and uh, you would like to stop me, me to stop there and have a discussion, I would be very happy to do that. So, uh, me and Professor Vanishi will continuously have an eye on the chat box. So, yeah. So, yeah. We, so maybe we we'll go to the next slide. We, we had enough of my introduction, and um, yeah. So let's go to the next slide, man. So I'm not rolling the slides myself for the audience uh, information. So. I would have to keep on asking Professor Van. Sir, uh, your for voice support. is so uh, breaking for fantastic me. Job. I've been hearing that from a. Uh, is it breaking now? Also? Yeah, some in between, sir. Okay. I don't know Just whether. Give me, a <laughs> give me. A Is it yeah. better now? Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. You should have. I, I wish you were informed earlier. So, apologies to all the audiences. Uh, if they have uh, audience members, if they had difficulties in hearing me, so let's begin with this. So, this is a photograph uh, which is in presence of in, in front of your screen. So, what you would see from this photograph? This is like a mirror image, right? So, somebody talking to themselves, right? And there's a lot of things happening in the brain. So they're like cog wheels, essentially. So if you spin one wheel, multiple wheels will spin. So this is the thought process. This cog wheel represents our thought process. And uh, thinking is something where ideally you're talking to yourself and you are analyzing the situation. And uh, when you go into your deep thinking, so thinking can be divided into, very, into three broad uh, segments. One is the early thinking, which is we all develop as a child. So when we start, when we get when we take birth essentially the thinking process starts and we start thinking this thinking gets matured when we are influenced by our thoughts by our surroundings by our uh, development um, gains so all these things essentially uh, contribute to our thought process and then we start thinking around it and uh, as we grow adult into adult uh, we start thinking or, or into even teenagers we start thinking more critically so when we start thinking more critically we utilize the logic we utilize the other attributes we talk about that in the new course so this is a three major major, major courses of, of thinking development essentially which we do and um, so this 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 the picture actually represents the same thing this, this is a image of which you are talking to yourself it gives you a thought process it gives you a definition and all these cog wheels represent your thought process and this is like a constant, so you can see the double uh, uh, edged arrows essentially around it. So these arrows are actually telling that there's a exchange, a deep exchange of thought. And when this critical thinking, um, I won't be touching upon this topic, goes to its extraordinary levels. When we cross the, or when we are touching the brain uh, barrier, something, if, if I'm allowed to say that, that is something which we call as highest state of thinking. So most of these philosophers and thinkers like Swami Vivekananda or any other philosopher or thinker or thought we have seen, they are in a very elevated state of uh, thought processes or even uh, any of these uh, prophets or anybody, uh, anybody extraordinary person um, has actually elevated this, uh, has mastered this process of critical thinking and they are at a very elevated level. So this is something which we call as consciousness or spiritual um, elevation, but this is actually, it's, if you look at it deeply, it's a form of an extraordinary critical thinking. Of course, we won't be touching on that. We will going in, into the more of a normal aspects of critical thinking and going around like, um, yeah. So next slide now. Yeah. So essentially, yeah, in this workshop, I would like to um, first of all bring your attention to what is critical thinking. And um, then, um, of course, um, you are spending your precious time here. So what do you expect? Uh, like uh, what do you expect to achieve from this workshop so at least uh, i can promise you that by the end of this session you will be able to uh, define the critical thinking what critical thinking is all about uh, at the same time you will be able to describe the role uh, that logic plays in critical thinking uh, you will also be able to see 
uh, how critical thinking skills can be used to solve a problem. Um, I have heard that this session has been done, has been convened earlier, a problem solving session. So we won't be touching much on this problem solving aspect. And um, then we also you describe how critical thinking skills can be used to evaluate information. And uh, then finally, you'll be able to identify strategies for developing yourself as a critical thinker. So yeah, can we go to the next slide? Yeah. So if you see the man on the left hand side, does not need any introduction of your screen. So, of course, um, uh, one of his um, good quote is that uh, uh, education is not learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. So anybody who has uh, excelled in uh, his or her field has actually mastered the process of thinking. And uh, be it in any profession, if you name it, if the person is, has excelled in it, he or she has mastered the process of thinking. And um, like I mentioned earlier, thinking comes naturally. We, we, we don't have to make it happen. Basically, it just, it, it happens. So right now also, you are, I'm sure you are thinking, hey, this speaker, is he good enough to tell me what, I, what, what should I be thinking? Can't I think enough? Or you must be thinking, am I doing justice to my time? Or you might be even thinking, what do you do after this presentation? How do you manage it at home? Or how do you manage it at work? What would be, what is following up tomorrow, day after? So, Con brain is continuously thinking and uh, there is no uh, I think, uh, yeah so there is essentially no limit of this thought process uh, since you get up in the morning you start thinking and till you go to your bed in the night you start thinking, you keep on thinking. And actually, if you look at it, uh, the neuroscience says that even when you are in your deep sleep, there is a thought process, but that's different. That's the dream-based thought process. So still, there is certain kind of thought process existing even in your subconscious mind or when you are sleeping. Right? So this is a continuous process, and it, it, it doesn't require any kind of extra effort. We are thinking, and we will think. As long as we are alive, we will be thinking. So what is critical thinking? How does it differ from a normal thinking or a thought process? So in a critical thinking, is basically an attempt or a classification of thinking where you are actually asking and answer the questions systematically. So it's like uh, you ask, it, it, it's basically a, uh, a methodology where you would ask, where you identify a problem, you ask questions and then you answer it eventually, you get an answer for it. So it's like um, a flowchart where you do a small, you can either do a paper exercise or you can do it mentally. But if you go with this critical thinking process, you will be able to get some informed informed answers for your problem. And uh, that would have covered many of the risk approaches also. So essentially a critical thinker is able to reduce consequences to what he knows. And um, of course a critical thinker knows how to make use of information to solve problems. We will come to that aspect in detail later. Uh, slides and then of course a, uh, a critical thinker seeks relevant sources of information to inform himself. So if you all of you would have heard about this concept of fake news all over the globe. So especially in this pandemic scenario this concept has gained uh, enormous importance and there's a fake news there is um, and WhatsApp is one such media which is WhatsApp is one such medium which is openly blamed for a fake news. So uh, like a uh, what happens? You just see a, a message comes on your WhatsApp, you see it and you get excited by it and you just forward it to whomever you feel like, your friends, your groups, whatever. But we hardly take a pause or a second to actually critically think on that message. So if you think, you, it, it's an online message you are getting, if you think and if you are not very sure of certain things or you find them alarming, then immediately you can do a small Google search, you can take a more informed approach and um, try to understand that if it is actually a fake news or not. And uh, if we all start doing this kind of a practice, this big menace of fake news, uh, you know, spreading out and creating a, a more and more discomfort and more and more problems for the whole society would actually stop. No need of uh, companies like uh, WhatsApp or Google to come in and, and make an artificial intelligence, bring in artificial intelligence to stop fake news. I think if we all start developing this just basic, start questioning what you see. You start um, questioning what is happening around you. You will automatically be a. You will take the first step towards critical thinking. Okay. So next uh, slide. Okay. So one minute, ma'am. This is a small video 
where I would like to play and uh, we can have a small interaction in this video. So this is like a, there are two brain teasers in it and you, know, you would have to answer these questions. So Professor Vanishri will actually pause this video when the question comes and then I would request you to think around it and what are the answers. Yeah. I go with that sir? Yes ma'am, please. Here's a brain teaser. A rooster is on the roof of a barn facing east. The wind is blowing to the west at 10 miles per hour. The rooster lays an egg. Which direction does the egg roll? It so, um, can anybody tell me, or can you think about the answers for it? Which direction the egg will go? Is it left or will it the right? If the rooster lays the egg, go? right? Yeah, I knew it at the participants. You can, uh, yeah, uh, this one, Anybody or else you can go with the chat box the also immediately within less than less than next five or ten seconds. Uh, sir, uh, a rooster is a male, so it cannot lay an egg. Perfect, ma'am. Perfect, uh, madam. And uh, this is what a critical thinker would actually do. So, can you go ahead, madam? Okay, yeah. if you want, you can pause the video and think it over. The answer, there is no egg. The rooster didn't lay one because roosters are male. Did you get it right? Let's pick this apart and see why many people have difficulty with this brain teaser and so many others. First, it's easy to overlook details or accept them without questioning. In this brain teaser, the answer could be found in the second word, rooster. In hindsight, we realize it's impossible for roosters to lay eggs, but it's easy to overlook when it's mentioned casually in the brain teaser. Another process at work in this brain teaser is misdirection. There were several details included that we may have paid too much attention to. The fact that the rooster was facing east and that the wind was blowing west at 10 miles per hour. In the end, these details had nothing to do with the actual answer but because they seemed important in the context of the brain teaser, they directed us away from the relevant information. The same techniques used to solve brain teasers can also be applied to real world situations. When you're trying to figure something out, it's important to analyze the information that's available to you. Are there any key details I may be missing? Am I being misled by something? Could I be thinking about this in another way? Brain teasers not only help to keep your mind sharp, can but they just can help the critical thinking. Okay. Yeah. So this video essentially saw that um, you, 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 you were able to see that uh, there is a lot of misinformation and that actually in real life scenario is actually confusion around us. So wherever we, we are started, when we start thinking in a logical way, uh, you would see many misinformation like in this video they had misinformation like uh, the wind is blowing in north to east and, um, and um, like, you know, simply that which direction it will go in. The basic answer was that like what um, uh, Madam answered that it certainly it is not lay it's a rooster there. So you have to really focus on what kind of a problem you are seeing, and rather than being misled by these confusions around you. So any kind of whenever you start your thought process, these confusions will actually surround you, and these confusions actually are responsible for derailing the thought process. Let's look at this another teaser. And let's continue the video, man. You will see another. Teaser. Yeah help to keep your mind sharp, but they can help improve your critical thinking skills as well. Let's finish things off with another brain teaser. You have a single match and are in a dark room with a candle, an oil lamp, and a gas stove. Which do you light first? Ma'am, pause it. Anybody who wants to answer this? They can answer. I didn't uh, mute them. Yeah, Miss uh, Karuna, could you please uh, be a little bit louder? Match sticks, sir. Absolutely, ma'am. So that's the right answer, which is not actually existent. So if you look at it in this video, there are the question is what you would light first, and there are three deviations, which is a candle, a lamp, and a gas stove. So which you would light first? Actually, a critical thinker who goes step by thinking would actually say, hey, I would light a matchstick first. And from that only I can either light a candle or you can light a lamp or I can light a... So the question didn't ask you out of the three what you would light first. The question only asked you what you would light first. 
and the answer to that question is the maths fine ma'am yeah can i continue sir That's it, ma'am. We can stop it. We can go to the next slide. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. And um, of course, kids uh, are good at playing these kind of videos, and they keep on showing you. And you also encounter uh, in many of these uh, kids magazines and books these kind of uh, uh, thought process, uh, thought provoking um, uh, videos or teasers. And uh, I think they are a good start to, um, for at least for kids. to develop a critical thinking yeah in adults this process takes slightly different turn but for kids i think this is a very good method to have to solve these brain teasers quizzes puzzles and to develop a critical or logical thinking so in this slide you know as you see the can i continue is it a question coming our way yeah i don't need them are there can i continue there am i audible to everybody yes 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 sir you can yeah. continue yeah so essentially if you look at it see what are the questions these critical thinkers ask essentially so this is something it these questions are asked but they are asked in a cognito or in silence they are not that you keep on asking them in 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 a loud way because then uh somebody from a behavioral aspect somebody can perceive that hey you are asking too many questions but uh, whenever you are doing a process or you are thinking it should be directed with these kind of questions like what's happening around so gather the basic information and begin to think of a question so any process you observe um, anything just think about it what's happening around and in, another question is why is it so important this is another important question like why why what is the significance and um, you know, do you uh, agree with that kind of a particular scenario or not and um, like uh, also there is something which is invisible so is there something which is a hidden like for example if you are taking a de investment decision many a times they are writing they write in small lines that uh, do read the safety document before you actually invest so this is something which you don't see so in an advertisement you don't see a risk but certainly a critical thinker would actually go and read that document in details to make an informed decision so it's very important to uh, to observe or hear or see what is actually not apparent in front of you and um, another question is like how do you know from there you go and how do you know so you ask yourself like where is the where the information came from and how it was constructed so essentially the source of information and uh, like if you remember the kids play this chinese whisper game i don't know if you call it by some other name but the game it goes on like this that i think of a sentence and i would um, whisper it in my neighbor's ears and then the neighbor would actually whisper it in his neighbor's ears and the chain goes long and at the end of the chain the person who is hearing it actually tells what he has heard so most of the time we we very be in this game uh, the things are lost in translation so what has started actually it has not traveled correctly to the last person so this is the what is it the source correct very important when you making a thought process right or critical thinking is and uh, it's also important who is saying it also so in especially in these kind of present kind of scenarios you would hear lots of things like um, lot of different kind of home medicines and all you would hear like uh, who are telling that this can uh, cure certain disease this can cure uh, covid this can cure this can help you relax from uh, dengue and what not but actually it's important who is saying it is it from an informed source or is just somebody just you know doing it without even thinking and thought process without any kind of an in, an an informed study they have just given out some verdict and we all are started following it so this is very important who is saying it and um, does that person has an authority to talk about that so it's important and um, so everybody can't be a doctor for example same way you have to go to a doctor to essentially get that particular treatment so most of us try to become doctors and advise hey you are having headache so that's not the right kind of a, a critical thinker would not do that essentially and um, what else and what if this is another question so if not this solution every time you won't get the desired solution so you have to figure out if not this what next if the life is uh, 
is filled up with surprises. So if you think that if not this process, what is the next process I can go with? And same thing applies for a profession and even for a personal life. So looking at the right side of the slide, the critical thinking is basically it's a reflective judgment, which is um, like we, I mentioned, it's based on three thinking skills, analysis, evaluation, inter inference. We will talk in more details about these skills. And uh, more important is that what are the dispositions toward critical thinking? So what is how you should train your mind or what are the, are the qualities you should talk about, think about or have it in your mind when, you're, when you want to train your mind for a critical thinking process. So this is something with inquisitiveness. I think it is one of the most important qualities for critical thinking that um, many a times ignorance leads to non-critical thinking. So it's very important that you are inquisitive, you are open-minded also. So many a times that uh, uh, our, uh, our brain is actually preconditioned. So as we grow, our brain is preconditioned by our surroundings, by even our parents, by even our, um, our friends and families. So we essentially have a preconditioned brain. And we have our brain has essentially lives in a comfort zone where the brain thinks that whatever he's thinking is actually the correct thing. And that leads to close-mindedness. So an open-minded approach is very important. Uh, Self-efficacy and, and attentiveness. And of course, um, uh, a goal in a goal orientation. So you have to understand like what is your goal, what you're going to do, and um, how you're going to address a problem so that an intrinsic goal orientation is important. Preservance is one such quality which um, is essentially you will find invariably in the, like I mentioned in the beginning of my talk and at the high end critical thinker. And then of course they are very organized. So organization is a key part in critical thinking. So you have to, whenever you're thinking, the thought process has to be very clean. So you have to first segregate things into their way. A, a jumbled problem cannot be solved or a jumbled question cannot be answered. A question has to be broken into several small questions and then only you can answer. And for that, a segregation is important. Okay. And uh, then, of course, you should be truth seeking, you should be creative also. This is another thing that um, to extrapolate certainly certain things which you would have thought critically requires some kind of creativity and, and um, some kind of reflection. And of course, uh, the most important part is, is skepticism. So, whenever something is told to you, um, be skeptical. Of course, you don't have to show it um, because that would be a behavioral problem. But in your brain, you have to be skeptical and you have to think twice if uh, what I heard is correct and uh, what I'm going to do, is there going to be a correct action out of it? Uh, most of these, if you do not follow a critical thinking thought process, actually, I have seen personally and you would also appreciate this fact that if somebody is not thinking personally, uh, like thinking critically, sorry, beg your pardon. Uh, in that case, the person is actually acting in aggression or rage then immediately you like what happens in a fight both the people who are fighting none of them is actually thinking critically they both are are actually into an aggression mode because of lack of thought process and uh, if one of them even would start thinking critically about the problem there would be no fight and rather a solution would be start coming out so essentially yeah and i would say um, even a reason behind the unorganized crime also is the lack of critical thinking so organized crime again is a result of very much critical thinking but uh, that's another aspect of it that uh, the negative aspect of extreme critical thinking but uh, the, um, the most of the unorganized crime or crimes of passion or rage what we call it in legal language they are essentially a result of non-critical or and absolutely immediate thinking so yeah that's very important that uh, yeah and with this second you can go to the next slide okay so these are the key critical thinking skills essentially what we have. So like I mentioned that, uh, mo let's spend some time on this slide essentially. This is the, I, I would say this is the heart of this of whole presentation or the whole um, discussion is that uh, critical thinking skills, our first skill is observation. So we all know observation. Most of us, uh, like we know we are academicians. So this is something which is taught to us from the beginning that we have, when you're reading, you're observing and when you're standing, so this is something where this you can do every time. I think most of the time, if you are standing quietly, you should not stand quietly, but rather be observing things around you. And uh, this is where you will gather a lot of information or input for further processing in the brain. Then once the observation is there, the information is actually in the brain, then the process of analysis starts. So here you essentially, it's very important that you start gathering you start understanding and interpreting the data and other information in a more organized way. Then, of course, you have 
a thought process which you, know, you have observed let's say some phenomena you have analyzed it now you want to make an inference out of it so an inference means okay what do i deal with it so this is like you draw a conclusion based on again you don't draw a conclusion based on some blind faith you draw a conclusion based on relevant data information and personal knowledge and experience so all these things combine into it will help you draw an inference and uh, then more important is communicate also so you have done a sub process a critical thinking has been done now but it's important to communicate for example if you think that something is good for a child for which you observe that the child is actually not listening to you so you observe that's the first observation that child is getting adamant he is not listening and then you analyze the condition why is the child getting adamant maybe he is not getting enough attention from me or maybe he is not getting um, enough um, uh, motivation so all these is, is is part of analysis and then is friend so then you actually all these maybe turn into okay possibility this is possible from question you get you are getting to answers and then it's important that you communicate so then you, you have to receive and share this kind of thought processes so if a child is telling you have to have an open ears so listening is a very important art for critical thinking so you have to be observant and also be a good listener and a good communicator at the end of it so once you have thought about it you have got an idea you have to communicate it appropriately to your audience so like I, when I was preparing this uh, objective, I, I was conceiving that what I would talk to you today, and based on that, I have um, I have partially trained my brain that okay, I would take your brains into this kind of a direction and lead you this uh, in a certain way. And for that, my communication has to be at the top of it. So this is something important. And then, of course, the most important part is you, what you get out of this critical thinking is you will be able to solve a problem, and uh, I can prove you. Uh, at the end of this talk, we have I have certain examples where you you would see that with this critical thinking, we are able to solve not only a small problem but even a very big problem. So uh, that we will see later on that um, yeah in this future slide. Yeah. So this is something which I'm um, sorry for this um, bad and overloaded slide. You might not be able to read everything in details, but these are some of the suggestions which I would have. to improve your observation skills of course if you like i mentioned to improve your observation skills uh, you can be more attentive around you you can be with a more mindful you can have a um, like examine what is happening uh, or hear something which is not even apparent and um, hear so in, in a, a colloquial language I, i would say hear which is not even being said so this is a, an important part of observation you observe you observe people's actions you observe Uh, the people's body languages you observe how the people are reacting to situations and that could actually and make you understand the situation around you and also the people around you and then of course you have how do you improve your analytical skills so for that you this is something in which you have to push yourself this is something which uh, you have to like you know force yourself to be more analytical so unfortunately or um, by name the name nature is not unfortunate that's the nature that some of us have a uh, most of us we do not have, or might might not have an analytical brain so we might not be able to analyze the problem very appropriately but this you can be achieved by practice and and the age is not a barrier for it so whatever age group you might be you can achieve an uh, analytical thinking or analytical skill in the thought process just by adding that uh, you start interpreting this information so whatever you have observed a few fraction of you start thinking around it just to start thinking that what you have observed and uh, few after a few times you will start seeing that uh, you are a better at analyzing the situation and then of course if you have an inference this is very important so this inference has to be unbiased so when you are drawing a conclusion keep aside your previous learning so a brain has a previous learning and which leads to bias uh, we also call it unconscious bias or conscious bias also but most like most often brain leads you to an unconscious bias and uh, to draw right inference for a problem you have to remove this unconscious bias from your head and uh, this can only be this is only possible if you remove this uh, pre notioned uh, uh, problems like so for example uh, if i would say that uh, okay uh, a person from a certain um, organization are they are not very productive can it be true i am hiring somebody and i am saying that a person from organization x coming from are not very productive it's a very bad generalization Uh, it and uh, not based on any kind of fact have you done a statistical survey 
to say that out of 100 people, 100 employees of that organization, 99 people are not useful? No. It just in that, uh, it's very, very bad uh, generalization. And this kind of generalizations actually lead to biasedness. And in that biasness, what would happen? This uh, person who might be the right hire for your organization also would not get hired. So this is very important that you have a, you draw an inference from an unbiased way. And then of course your communication, so communication can be improved in multiple ways. Like um, for example, you're, when you're, whenever you're talking, we do a mindful talking. So what I mean by do a mindful talking is that whenever uh, you're talking, take a small pause and think around it, what you want to talk and then you speak it. And um, you have to speak minimally because uh, many most of the information what we are t telling out of our brain actually is not being received by your opponent or by the person standing in front of you. So you have to essentially um, critically think again that uh, whatever you are communicating, is it actually being received aptly by, your, by, by the person? So a feedback is a good example to improve your communication. To so seek feedback every time you, have, you can seek feedback from your uh, peers, from your, from your students or from your, even from your seniors, even from your kids, from your parents, whoever is there around you. And even from yourself, you can have a feedback from yourself. So all these essentially will help you improve communication and uh, will have you, you will have a better control of your words and a better control of your speech whenever you're communicating outside. And then of course your problem solving skills. So all this when you do, you will automatically see that you are able to make more informed decisions. You are able to set your goals properly, be it personal goals or professional goals. And uh, whenever you're taking a decision, be it a small decision like uh, what, is a, what will be the dinner menu today? or be it a big decision like should I buy into a property or investment that's on the personal front, on the professional front like uh, should I ask my boss for a promotion or should I uh, apply for a new position somewhere or should I like you know talk to my senior in this way, all the, all these things would, if you do a small paper exercise or a small mental exercise you will be far better prepared and that will actually inform you if it's the right time or not to take a particular step or say something and that would save you a lot of embarrassment and actually help you take a very informed and focused decision. Right. Um, and then, uh, so thanks. Uh, so I'm getting some. Um, I'm uh, happy that. Uh, uh, so in a few chat chat box, um, people are commenting that um, uh, they are able to get it. So unfortunately, it's not a very live audience or it's a live audience, but at least I am not able to hear you all. So that's an unfortunate situation because of this pandemic. I wish we had a more live audience where we could have heard, heard everybody but uh, yeah uh, uh, thank you for for your support and i am assuming that um, i'm able to communicate my message across okay so uh, the essence of essentially the critical thinking is to essentially like this is something what is the critical thinking is so essentially it's actually it's a process to take you from a state where your thought process is spontaneous like you just think spontaneity or I, I, I want to go for a pizza, I, I will go now. So that's a very spontaneous decision. A thought a critical person would think about it. Hey, is, 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 do I require, have I cooked dinner at home? Have I, do I really require a pizza right now? Is it good for my health? Maybe I had it, I, I had eaten out somewhere yesterday and today I should be actually, actually going in for home cooked food. So all these things, this is a very spontaneous decision and most likely it might be wrong, a spontaneous decision. And then it's a subconscious decision. Again, the, most of the decisions which are not critically thought are subconscious. They are uncontrolled. There is no control on these kind of decisions. You just take them in a haste, in a rage. And uh, like I mentioned, time of passion is essentially the result of spontaneity, uh, uncontrolled uh, impulsive behavior, and unanalyzed situation, and which is, and more importantly, self-validating. So most of the time, I always pat my own back. This is something wrong. I'm actually validating my own thoughts without even even doing a, a, a conscious a critical thinking process. So this is something really, really bad. So at least if I if I think that okay, a certain uh, X um, uh, vegetable is bad. I don't like let's say I don't like uh, peas for example. So why I don't like peas? It, it, it's a self-validated thought. Oh, I don't find it very healthy. I don't find it. This is I'm self-validating and a, a bias, which is not actually correct. You have to go ahead and see if what is the nutrition value of peas, what is the potential of what benefit I will have, and how can I do something to make it more tastier for me and cook it in a much tastier way. 
I gave you very small example. So you don't have to self-validate a thought process. And uh, what it does, a critical thinking, when you are hard thinking critically, you essentially start probing things. You have a more uh, disciplined approach towards the problem. You can control your own emotions. You can control your own thought process. You are more seek. Uh, you are more like uh, seeking the truth. Essentially, you want to understand what is the reality, be it any problem. So, like in enough most of our academic careers, we would have seen that. Uh, People will say, "Oh, this student is not very great, or this student is not very very good." It's a it's a problem. It's not a just judgment. It's not a judgmental thing that this student is bad, and you hear it and then you believe it. This is the worst way of thinking. Then actually, you have not applied any thought process. You have just believed what other person is saying in a blind way. So in a in a thought process, you would actually seek the truth. You would actually start probing that why this student is not good. What is wrong with this student? Is it really that he is not good, or is it something which uh, uh, is actually apparent from outside and inside? He is actually a, a gem. So you look. Also, you self-assess it. You keep on self-assessing yourself, and this is a very important aspect. Of, but, but of course, there is a small caveat. Self-assessing can lead to. I have seen that uh, people who are, do a lot of self-assessment and who do a lot of self-correction can be from behavioral aspect. They can be seen that. Uh, Very non-adjusting in the society, you are not cooperating with people because they are essentially always in the correction mode. But then, there you are not doing critical thinking. If you are always in a correctional mode, or if you are always self-assessing it, then you are actually involved in that confusion. So you remember in the first video that 10 miles east, west, all that you are involved in that kind of a divergence. You are not doing critical thinking that the rooster it cannot lay egg. So don't confuse the self-assessment and self-correction with that kind of a behavior. So. There's a there's a fine line of difference between a confusion and a self-assessment and self-correction. Self-assessment and correction is based on facts, and um, a delusional behavior is based on simply simple confusion. So delusions are not only for mental for um, for um, like uh, um, for patients or psychiatric patients, but delusions are also for common people. So we all undergo some delusion, and when we involve self-assessment and self-correction, we come out of that delusion or that illusion, right? So certainly, critical thinking is not skepticism. Critical thinking is certainly is about you being skeptical, but you are not schizophrenic. So in schizophrenia, which is a, an, again a psychological condition, a person doubts everything. Whatever you see around, you start doubting it. But that is not skepticism. Doubting something is not skepticism. Skepticism is think, pause for a while, and, and analyze the situation. If it is correct or wrong, that's all. It's not doubting. Skepticism is not doubt. And then, of course, you have a, you have you are examining assumption. So you are examining assumption, and um, then you have a challenging uh, reasoning. So you have you challenge your reasoning. So essentially, but critical thinking is not like big not. Is not about memorizing. So many people memorize some facts and then they talk. Especially when you're giving a talk or something. I think if you believe in that particular concept or subject, it will come out from your heart, your, your on your own. So imagine when you have been teaching the subject or most favorite subject, you have to prepare less. And when you are teaching a subject or, or when you are talking about a subject which is not very close to you or you are not very mastered, you find it difficult. Why is that? It's simply because you have in, in the first case you have employed critical thinking, in the second case you have not employed critical thinking. And that's why the subject becomes more and more difficult, even to teach and even to get grasp also when you are a student or when you are on the other side of the table. So and of course one part is this blind acceptance of authority. This we all. See day in and night, uh, be it the Godman talking about to us, or be it the uh, fake news coming to us in every direction. Fake news is coming. We all blindly accept this is going to happen. I think that's where we have to raise a voice. That's where a, a, an informed voice comes in, where you actually and this can come in by you know if you uh, by, if you have decided critically thought about it, you can write blogs, you can write newspaper articles, you can uh, even send a correctional message. So many times I also do. I sometimes, I, if I get a WhatsApp message, I try to actually Google that fact immediately: is it true or wrong? And if it is wrong, I immediately try to send a news article, which is actually, you know, most of the time you would see that uh, this WhatsApp there is a lot of news around fake WhatsApp articles. So then you can immediately post that article and stop that particular news there only. So you have you you, you should deny, you know, any time, any any day, accepting blind acceptance of authority. As a kid, we are forced to do that. That's our natural come. Pulsion, and that's how the kids grow. We can't change that, and we should not be changing that. But as we grow, as we are independent thinkers, 
we should come out of this uh, blind acceptance of authority and rather be more thoughtful, be more critical, be more, think, be more thinking around it. Yeah. Okay. So can we go to the next slide? Yeah. So now I want to shift towards you towards uh, another concept called as lateral thinking. So lateral thinking is a uh, uh, some people call it call it even parallel thinking. So this concept was actually introduced by um, a gentleman. Actually, he's a medical doctor by training, and um, his name is um, Dr. Edward De Bono. And um, so he is like a. It's it's like a, after Sigmund Freud, somebody who has spoken much about about thought process is uh, Edward De Bono, and he actually he has written a very famous book on lateral thinking, which is actually still being taught by. Um, many of these so I, I know that um, even um, I had attended some session directly from him uh, when I was working for this international pharmaceutical company and uh, um, certainly I think this is quite insightful so ever if you get a chance do read his books uh, and uh, on lateral thinking and you would have a different dimension on your thought process and believe me you would start thinking very differently you would be a more happier person so lateral thinking or critical thinking uh, like uh, professor Vanishi said in, the, in, his, in her beginning Will make makes you a more happier person, and this is very to so try it right away or right now also, and maybe after this talk, you try lateral, lateral or critical thinking, and you would be a more happier person. So that's why most of these corporations like IBM, Groupon, British British Airways, most of these corporates, and other I would say all of these corporates, they essentially train in this lateral thinking their employees because they have seen a significant rise in productivity when these employees are thinking laterally as far as their profession life. And if you can do it in a personal life also it is going to be extraordinarily beneficial for you. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah. So what um, Dr. De Bono proposed that essentially he has like he proposed six thinking hats. I am sure might, most of you would have known these hats and the, for the common um, like a, you would have always heard this phrase saying let me put my thinking cap on, let me put my thinking hat on. This is actually coming from this book. So the thinking hats or caps were actually proposed by De Bono and uh, there are six different colors of these hats like you can see on your screen. So one is a blue hat which is essentially for the process. So this hat is like uh, thinking about what is what thinking is needed, organizing the thinking and planning an action. So then there is a white hat. So what is white hat is, is, is about the facts. This represents the facts. So like information, data, neutral, objective, what do I know, what do I need to find out. Is more increasing this is like gathering the facts and uh, then there is a red hat so red hat is all about the feelings or emotions so this is in here there you will talk about your intuition so i, I sometimes I, I back i told you don't accept blind faith but blind faith doesn't mean that you stop in your intuition so intuition could be um is, is again is a part of the brain which actually is an extrapolated thinking, intuition or gut feeling are actually extrapolated thinking based on your life experience. So let's say I have a, um, we, are, we are crossing a dangerous road. So our gut feeling or intuition always says that you have to be extremely careful in crossing that road. This is an extrapolated thinking because sometime in your past you would have either heard or seen some very bad accidents on that road. So it's an intuition or a gut feeling that hey be careful, that, that road is not safe. Although there is no data for that, and, uh, and but that's not completely blind faith. It's based on certain facts for which your brain has extrapolated. So brain has that extraordinary capacity of extrapolating certain observations. And that is where your intuition, hunches, gut feelings come from. And that's why some people say my sixth sense is sharp. So sixth sense is nothing. Nobody has seen future. People who predict future or who have sixth sense are actually able to evolve their critical thinking. They have a critical thinking process. And simply they attach it to your present scenario and give you a, an aspect of the future. So most of this, um, so I can tell you a small story about it. So essentially if you, in, in the life, you have, we all have heard of Buddha, right? So Buddha was born as a prince and then he took this, um, uh, he went, uh, he took this sannyas and he, he became a hermit and uh, he went in the forest. So his father was a king and he was very passionate for his child. And, um, so he called, when this uh, Buddha went to his forest uh, for his uh, parents and uh, for his, um, as, um, yeah, when he left home, uh, the king, his father, King Shirdodan, uh, he actually called all these, um, uh, um, you know, what these uh, people who predict the future. 
uh, he called the, all these, uh, these uh, astrologers and asked them that, hey, when my son was born, when he was a little bit young, he told me that uh, he will become the world's greatest emperor. And uh, what happened now? He has actually gone to the forest. So do you don't know your science is good or what is wrong? What, what, why, why you told me a, a wrong thing? So these same astrologers, they said, sir, we see a certain um, you know, position of your stars. And this is what your natal chart is saying. Your natal chart of this child says that he will be an extraordinary person. So now from we only know this is a fact. Now with the critical thinking, what we did is, we, we, we thought that you are a king. So of course the king's son would be a king in those days. So of course, if it's an extraordinary person, he will become an emperor. That's why we told you as an emperor. Same thing, if you were a, um, uh, if you were a businessman, and if this uh, chart would, a natal chart was presented to us, we would have said this become will be, become an extraordinary businessman because the son of a businessman would take up. So there, the brain has extrapolated, a critical thinking has extrapolated into tell a future. But actually the future is, it cannot be predicted. It, it, it can only be extrapolated. So most of the predictions are extrapolation. And rather, it's, um, yeah, so just wanted to tell you and come, 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 come. Uh, yeah, sorry, I got deviated a bit, but um, looking back to this, um, going back to our hats. So then there's a creativity hat, whereas this is the green hat, and this is the, uh, all about ideas, alternatives, possibilities, solutions. And, and um, then there is a yellow hat, of course, which is about the benefit. And uh, like you talk about the positives, plus points, and then there's a cautious. So this is a caution, this is the black hat. So this is essentially, it's about the difficulties, weakness, dangers. So this can be a derailer also. So you have to use these, uh, uh, like especially these two, the, feel, the red hat, the feeling, and the caution, the black hat in very much a tight balance otherwise you will end up taking a wrong decision so i think uh, this is a very detailed topic uh, the thinking hat and we could have had just one session about this thinking hat so i would not uh, I, I won't be i won't be able to take you much deeper into this but certainly i would um, leave you with this video on just on thinking hat before you continue further and that would help you understand this thought process and how you can utilize in creative thinking so professor vanishri can we go to the next slide video which is about thinking The Six Thinking Hats concept was developed by Dr. Edward de Bono, and it provides a method that can be used by individuals and groups to provide clarity of thought and facilitate practical thinking. Usually when we think, whether alone or when collaborating with others, we consider a number of things all at once, the pros, the cons, data, feelings, ideas and approach. We then try to make sense of it all at once by discussing, arguing, promoting one view and criticizing another until the debate is either won or lost. Such debates can become circular or result in decisions that are unsatisfactory to some of the people involved, which results in lower levels of commitment and support. When everyone is attempting to get different things from an interaction and it just isn't working, Six Thinking Hats offers an alternative. It allows the different modes of thinking to be separated and done one at a time. It essentially works by introducing six metaphorical hats, each defining a certain type of thinking. The blue hat represents control. It's used to manage thinking. The blue hat is normally worn by a facilitator of a meeting to set the agenda, keep focus, and summarize conclusions or next steps. The white hat is about facts. What do we actually know and what do we need to know? It's concerned with objective thinking and the use of data. The black hat is the safety hat, also known as the judgment hat. It can be used to identify risks, difficulties and problems by pointing out thinking that doesn't fit with what we know about the facts or our experiences, the regulations or strategy and our values, and it points out potential problems. It allows us to express our skeptical side, but it's done constructively. Reasons must be given. The yellow hat is our optimistic hat. It's used to identify benefits, value and feasibility. Considering both the short-term and long-term perspectives, this hat is actually much harder to use than the black hat. As before, reasons must also be given when wearing the yellow hat. The green hat is our creative thinking hat. It's used when we're exploring new ideas, seeking alternatives and possibilities, or generating new concepts. The green hat can also be used to remove the faults or risks were identified with the black hat. As this hat is concerned with creativity, it does not necessarily need 
to be logical. And finally, we have the red hat. This is the only hat that does not need to be justified in any way. It's purely about our feelings, our intuition and gut instinct. The red hat gives us permission to express feelings as they are right now, and it helps to stop those what I really think type conversations that can so often happen after meetings, but then derail much of the good work that was achieved. Our gut instincts are also a key ingredient in our decision making, so don't underestimate the importance of this hat, but keep the time that you wear it short. The hat analogy is useful, as we can imagine taking off one hat and putting on another as we switch our modes of thinking. The six thinking hats works very well in groups. Instead of adopting an adversarial point scoring approach, everybody is aiming to contribute in the same way and at the same time, thinking in the same direction or parallel thinking. However, it also allows us to improve our own decision making by ensuring that we consider other perspectives and introducing what De Bono calls lateral thinking. I'll try these six thinking hats to run a team meeting. We suggest the following sequence of hats to get you started and to help keep things on track. First use the blue hat to define the purpose of the meeting. Use the red hat to find out how everybody is. Before you, use the white hat to share information with the team. Now the floor is open to the team and everybody has an opportunity to talk about what's gone well using the yellow hat. This is where we share good news stories if we have them and to share best practice. Now we use the black hat to talk about what hasn't gone so well. What challenges did we face since we last met? The green hat is then worn to share ideas on how we can overcome those challenges or to make offers of support. The team then puts the red hat back on to talk about how we feel now, having had all of the conversations that we've just had. And finally, you as the facilitator put the blue hat on to define agreed actions and the next steps that were agreed. Just remember, everyone contributing must use the same hat at the same time. I like to think of the Six Thinking Hats as an operating system which can be used with other tools and techniques such as mind mapping or brainstorming to very good effect. When innovating, the Six Hat technique is a great way to pay attention to new ideas and explore them quickly and efficiently. To learn more about Six Thinking Hats, we recommend that you read Six Thinking Hats by Edward de Bono. Or, if you want to find out more about how Optima Training can help your business with training that sticks, visit www.optimatraining.co.uk. Yeah, yes sir. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Thank you. Actually, I was on mute and I was not able to unmute myself. So, sorry for so, so No, no, no. I should be sorry for that. I should have, uh, yeah. So, uh, again, I missed on critical thinking. I should have thought about it. If I unmute myself, then I won't be able to unmute myself. So, that was, again, in a spurt of a moment, I muted myself and then, you know, we lost some time. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's everywhere. Critical thinking is everywhere. So yeah, so before we go, like you know, this is the model to essentially to generate critical thinking. So the critical thinking goes in a workflow. So at the core of the critical thinking process is a problem or an issue. And uh, then there's a, how do you, uh, there's a description of the problem. So in this description of the problem, essentially you can talk about uh, what this problem is all about, what is the context of the situation, what is the main point of the or, or problem, mm. Where does this problem take place, for example? Who is this by or who is involved in this problem? Or who gets affected by this problem? Who might be interested? Or where does it occur? So all these questions are essentially part of the description. right? And uh, then we go to the analysis part, which we have just spoken about. So in analysis, you from why you come to how. So essentially it comes to how did this occur? 
and uh, how does it work in theory and in also in practice uh, how does the one factor affect the other factor and uh, how do the parts fit into the whole system or, or, or about it and uh, why did this occur again so how was that done uh, is it an argument or is it a theory or a suggestion uh, what is if this was wrong right or what is alternative all these things are part of analysis you are analyzing the whole system. finally the evaluation so this is like then you get start getting the answers. What does it mean? What is what is why it is significant? This is a very important answer you should get from all the thought process. Why is it significant? Which I always believe that it's very important to understand why is something significant? Why you should ever do it? Because any kind of an action requires some investment of your time, of your energy, and uh, of your um, so you, if you get this answer right, why, why is my action significant or not? You can choose to do it or not to do it. Simple thinking. Many people would say, going to work is my compulsion. I can't choose if it is significant or not. But no, a critical thinker will say that's the livelihood or that's my financial freedom. It's not livelihood. And I need to work to get that, uh, you know, that salary or that money, essentially to, so that makes it significant. It's not a burden, it's a significant aspect and where you have to try to become something in your workplace to essentially get that particular kind of financial freedom or that professional recognition, whatever you are working for, that aim has to be clearly decided. And then you would not find going to going or reporting to your work, you know, you would actually rather start enjoying that. Be it any kind of work. So many people I've seen that, uh, um, oh, it's cold right now, people in the north who, I'm based in Tirupati, but people who are in the north, it's quite cold there and I hear many from my friends, today we won't cook, it's very, very cold and all. But if you do it, analyze it critically, you would realize that you would find all the motivation for cooking and uh, that's where and e easy cooking or, or, or whatever way, but you will find the motivation so critical thinking actually helps you motivate get, get the motivation and um, of course you can talk about what next is it, is it a, in the, an evaluation phase you can talk about where, where else it can be applied and what are you what can be learned from it what you need to be doing now so stuff. so if you look on the right hand side of your screen they are essentially Something skill sets I have mentioned. So they are like some are lower order skill sets. We are born with this. For example, remembering and understanding. So as soon as, as I am born, I remembered that um, I have to cry for food, and also um, when most of the kids suck their thumbs or legs when they are hungry. So this is something which is a, a remembrance that okay, I have a natural pacifier attached with me, which is my thumb or my leg. I which a newborn child under, is able to understand it, remember it. At the same time, understanding, like I mentioned, is actually, is again, is a certainly a um, lower order skill, but it's a, it's almost a, a natural given thing that you start understanding the situation, that it's warm, so you, the child also learns to adapt to it, accept to it, so essentially if you look at it at the bottom line, we, we all do understanding and remembering, but then there are higher order skills, like applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating, so if you see, most of the kids, are unable to apply certain things. They have to, have, they have to be taught. So most of uh, the primary teachers would act, are actually involved only in applying, teaching the kids how to apply a certain thought process, or how to analyze, or how to evaluate, and how to create. So all these things are essentially higher order skills, which, need, which are essentially for critical thinking. So can I go to the next slide? Now? So this is a very interesting video, which we have to play. But this is about uh, an Olympic gold medalist. And you will see, you will after this video, you will realize how a critical thought process was able to change his game. And um, in this video, you will also realize that uh, when you are uh, changing a thought process drastically, you might be involved in certain kind of uh, public humor. People might laugh at you. People might uh, disqualify you. People might be like, "Hey, are you are you, are you really uh, crazy?" Allow me to use this word. Sorry, are you really crazy in doing this? But uh, certainly, if you have a thought process clear then this kind of situation happens. It's a real life example. Please see the video. Yeah. The year is 1968. We're at the Olympic Games in Mexico City. Dick Fosbury has just made a record-breaking high jump, winning the gold medal and completely changing how future athletes approach the high jump. But let's rewind and see how critical thinking played a part in getting Fosbury here. For years, high jumpers used a variety of techniques all of which allowed for the jumper to land on their feet after clearing the bar. Athletes assumed that these were the most optimal methods. 
but in high school, Fosbury tried them and found himself getting below average results. So he asked himself, how else could I jump over this bar? Instead of accepting the norm, he began experimenting and came up with a new and different jumping method. He would jump and rotate in the air so that he went over the bar head first on his back. At the time, he was laughed at and criticized for this new method. It looked pretty silly and was so different from the typical methods, but it worked due to some unexpected benefits. It lowered Fosbury's center of gravity, actually placing it below the bar even though he himself was jumping over it. This allowed him to use less energy while increasing his height, and by leaping backwards, he was reducing his chances of knocking the bar off with his arms and legs. Using this technique, Fosbury was jumping higher than anyone else on his high school track team. He continued to hone this method in college and moved on to qualify for the Olympics. And so here we are, back in 1968, with Fosbury winning the Olympic gold medal. He took a problem, not being able to jump particularly high, and used critical thinking to come up with a solution, a new way of jumping that greatly improved his results. To this day, almost every high jumper uses this method, now known as the Fosbury flop. And so it just goes to show how critical thinking can both raise the bar and change the game. Thank you, ma'am. Very support. So I hope you enjoyed this video. But uh, this even uh, while I was um, seeing this video, even this motivated me also that uh, uh, a lateral thinking, again, this is an example of a lateral thinking, uh, because this person actually turned itself and jumped aside. So that was something very good. And uh, that helped him raise the bar. So like now we can go to some examples of it. So I will skip this slide because we have already discussed this, that uh, there are things, the critical thinking process is describing, analyzing, and evaluating. And for the interest of time, let us go to the thought process or to the example of the next slide. So this I have chosen, it's a, it's a problem which I have self-created this kind of example. So this is a, about a person who wants to open a tea shop. This is a, so I'm going to demonstrate you, like I said, mentioned earlier, that uh, from a smaller problem to a more complex problem. So this is a tea shop problem. This person wants to open a tea shop. So the first question is getting the information, he's describing it is where I will open a tea shop. The second question he's asking is what customers will I serve? And then <clears throat> he's asking who is interested in my tea basically, who would have my tea? And then the immediate critical question you would ask is why should I open a tea shop at all? Is it a good business? So when you're analyzing it, then you are again now you go to analyzing mode. Here you are starting thinking what if the location is poor? Now you are analyzing about where will I open the tea shop? That's the first question. You are analyzing it. What if the location is poor? What if there are no customers? So then the second is, will my customers like only tea or should I also serve coffee and snacks? So that gives you an insight into the menu of the tea shop. Then again, you are like, what customer should I serve this? Should, and what should be my price? What if my tea is too expensive and if nobody buys it? And then you have to also analyze on you have to answer these questions. So so what if I open a tea shop? Will I make at all any profit? Like how will my return on investment will work? So now you are starting getting answers. When you evaluate it, you start getting the answers that I should choose a location with more customers and minimum competition. That's one thing. So you start getting this answer, and then I should uh, serve variety because if I just serve tea, my customer of clientele would be limited. I should also target customers who are just uh, passing by and who are the daily workers or craftsmen because if I look out for more posh workers the, my investment cost will go high I would have to open a restaurant for this a tea shop I think uh, and if my these if I my target customer are passing by people or by daily workers or craftsmen then certainly I want to keep my prices under control given the economic background of this customer so if I sell my tea for or coffee for 20 or 30 rupees it's not going to sell I have to keep it at 5 to 8, 10 rupees minimum maximum then uh, maybe I can decrease on the quantity. So that's again a thought process or critical thinking come in. And then of course, uh, I cannot have open a very fancy shop because that will immediately increase my investment. I can only have a shop which has only pants and well, that's all bare minimum furniture, bare minimum thing. And then also go on for minimal loan because again, your return for investment is a question which you already asked. So this is where you are able to take an informed decision to just open a tea shop somewhere. Can you go to the next slide? Now we are going to a slightly complex problem in this pandemic, right? Most of us would have I have come across this question is, should I send my kid to the school? Because schools have opening up, 
but i should i send my kid to the school or not or should i be or if you have uh, if you have uh, if you do not have children then of course you would be assisting somebody in taking these decisions or if you are yourself an academician you would be a part of the decision making process that should the kids come to school or not so essentially how can we address this problem in a critical thinking way we first describe this problem you can always do this as a paper exercise also you are describing our schools opening first of all you ask this question are they really opening and then the second question you can ask is there a chance of an infection so can my child get infected at all this is a realistic question no blind faith yes my child can get infected i you have to accept this possibility that if my child goes into infection he can get infected so this is a, an acceptable can school maintain social distancing you ask ask this question very critically can this are is the school capable of doing it that's an in, so we have an information that social distancing is a must to keep the pandemic away and then you are asking can you can the school maintain social distancing and then also you can ask is it medically safe to go out now so with this question you are going to analyze it so then you see you hear that some schools are opening but is it then you are analyze it is it necessary really to go to school can can can't i just do by studying at home so that's some question which you are analyzing it and then you are again analyzing it if one child is infected or a carrier is a carrier then the whole class can get infected so then i am basically putting everybody at risk right including my child what if the kid will go out to school and con- and um, and fail to maintain a social distance and the school is they are not able to control the kids that's a big possibility and only an analytical brain can keep this possibility into account and uh, is it safe to use the school bus so on some important aspects so how do i send my school to to get to school so now you get an answers i think it's fine to send my kid can take lessons from home unless until it's absolutely necessary so i think i am okay with um, my kid can take lessons from home and i have every day online classes uh, that's good option and then i think since um, a social distancing is a concern i would only suggest senior students should go to school since they can maintain social distance they can be controlled in better as compared to primary kids who have a, where it will be a tough time for any school to maintain so we have got an answer here that a certain age group is required to go to school not everybody should go to school that's another answer and then um, since the school buses could be a problem now there is another answer the parents should be ready to drop their kids to school so if you are signing up for your school attendance you should be ready to sign up also that your you will drop your kid to school every day so because public transport sanitization cannot be guaranteed right so it's all these factors essentially make give you an informed decision that uh, if my kid is studying in primary classes or at least in 6th 7th grade i won't send him to school beyond that 9th grade plus 10th grade plus yes i can send him to school with all the precaution on so that's an informed decision you have taken <clears throat> from a from a critical thing right sorry my video was on you so i forgot to and uh, then we will look at a more higher order example now which is the country's problem can you go to the next slide so in this it's a higher order problem it's a problem which uh, so i am a resource person for icmr also and uh, from i am an industry representative and i we discuss every day we are discussing if this uh, this vaccine problem and this is a very very critical thought uh, problem which we are answering every day to support the the the, the country and um, uh, for that many aspects of critical thinking go in but i'm just giving a basic example like for example the vaccine distribution right so what uh, who all need this vaccine first question is this basically and the second question is will vaccine prevent a disease that's another important question how will vaccine reach all the indians and uh, the last question is what should be cost of vaccine we all are thinking in this this is the basic uh, we have we know a problem set now we have got that we have described the problem set appropriately now we start analyzing it in analyzing it the first question is who all need the vaccine the first question is who should receive the vaccine first the second question is uh, will the vaccine prevent disease so my analytical brain will tell me is the vaccine safe at all should i take it or should i skip it what if some people are not vaccinated then uh, would it still control the disease or we will still have to wear masks and go all around and the uh, vaccine requires a cold chain maintenance basically so this is an, an information which you have gathered and you are analyzing it so how will this uh, cold chain work for sub zero vaccine so most of these some of these vaccines which are coming up the covid 19 vaccine are supposed to be stored in less than 0 degree centigrade even to minus to minus 70 degrees or 70 degrees below zero it has to be maintained 
and uh, can this cold chain work so it has to be transported from the manufacturing uh, company all the way to far flung villages of india can i maintain a constant minus 70 degree temperature this is a very important aspect for a vaccine distribution from the government thought process and uh, can a common man afford this vaccine that's another important aspect if my vaccine price is 100 rupees also per injection <clears throat> do you think my common man can afford this injection are multiple doses required that's another aspect so of thinking it's like if i require 100 100 rupees two doses or if i require multiple doses then my exercise the whole uh, exercise the whole effort doubles up and uh, then how much of a common like um, you know what should be the common man's contribution what should be the government contribution all these bigger problems come in when you go for analysis and when you evalu- evaluate you start getting some answers that the first question is that vaccine should be given to the priority people which are the front line workers who are fighting the disease and also to the country's defense personnel who are actually standing and guarding the country so something if if these two people are not fine fit we are at, at a bigger risk so this is something they are the priority group so they have to be given first and then of course um, uh, ample clinical data from different countries should be carefully analyzed before actually finalizing on the brand of vaccine so this a, a thought, thought process a critical thought process tells me that you can just don't go for any brand but rather see the data from all the countries they all are giving to the people and then make an informed choice then of course you analyze the herd immunity status of the population so if my population is having a herd immunity is it um, can i calculate the maximum coverage from this vaccine what would be the vaccine be giving me a benefit or not and um, apart from it the cold chain problem exists so just for the information for example the pfizer's um, vaccine is been rejected by india because we cannot afford to maintain a minus 70 degree centigrade cold chain so india has decided on a, again arising from a critical thinking that uh, we will not purchase the pfizer vaccine from a government point of view because Uh, we cannot afford to maintain minus 70 degrees in far flung of villages areas in small small health centers we cannot bear we cannot even maintain 4 degrees maintaining minus 70 is almost a uh, impossible task right so that's an informed decision that you will not want to engage and then what about the pricing of these vaccines again these answers that start coming in from this thought process that vaccine price should be bracketed for example so it should be sold for the super rich or for the rich at actuals or even at a premium so even if the cost of injection is uh 1000 rupees it can be even sold to at cost of a premium so you can uh, you know transfer the benefit to the uh, to the lower section group so for example uh, there could be a small subsidy for the middle class and heavily subsidized for the poor and maybe a free distribution for below the poverty line to have a complete coverage so this way we started with the problem you analyzed it and then you have come with certain kind of solution So this is something I just wanted to tell you that uh, a small problem like a tea shop or sending my kid to school to a big national problem can all be solved by critical thinking, and this is being happening. This is happening. So if you just go to the uh, the next slide, so this example is of a non-critical thinking. This is from a child, like a child is thinking of food, he is crying. So the child cannot describe a situation. He cannot think critically. So there he just knows I am hungry and I am having some kind of discomfort, but. when the and when the child cannot even analyze this problem also. he cannot analyze what to do he starts crying he start looking for something to eat or something like that but he has not analyzed the problem and evaluation is simply not possible in this case the child just keeps on crying and is cranky and actually here dependent on critical thinking of parents so if you do not think critically you will eventually be dependent on critical thinking of someone else that's the key bottom line i wanted to uh, tell from this slide is that if you do not yourself think critically somebody else will critically think for you and you will just be a follower so to be a leader or to be ahead in life i think it's very important that you start thinking critically so that others can get benefited from your thought process and if you do not lead think critically then like this child you are you are actually and you are aggressive and you have increased and increased problem but it doesn't help crying would not help you will not get food this way. so essentially it's very important that to think critically in this so yeah so here i have almost uh, covered my session i am also approaching 4 o'clock which i am told is the last thing so i would go to the next slide and uh, i would leave you with this last uh, so this is basically how do you parameter how do you think critically so if you see the video this more or less is covered into this so i would go to the next slide and um, just watch this video and this is will give you an idea uh, of how do you know essentially when you are think that you are thinking critically So of course, um, thinking critically, you should have a clarity of thought. That uh, could you 
uh, and then you have you should have an accuracy so all the data should be accurate um precision is very important thing in critical thinking and the uh, relevance depth breadth of subject and then the logic is the is, the, is, is actually a cornerstone of critical thinking it should be logical uh, significance and and fairness so when you do a uh, critical thinking you end up getting a fair solution or a or a or a neutral solution which is actually beneficial to all so this is important so just see the video and then uh, yeah i would leave you to leave you from here and uh, i hope uh, we are open for question answers after this video Professor Vanishri, can you play yeah, this video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going with that, sir. Yeah. People are thinking all the time. We plan to do things. We remember things that happen. We respond to questions and we consider different options. We might call this simple thinking, fast thinking. There are different ways of thinking, and another way is slow thinking. We can't see the video actually. It's only the one second, one second, sir. Are you able to see now, sir? Uh, no. One I second. can only see the slide deck. One second. Now, sir? Uh, yeah. Now we can play. Please play it. Now we can see. I hope others can see it. Yeah. Please sorry. Chat box if you're not able to see the video. People are thinking all the time. We plan to do things. We remember things that happen. We respond to questions and we consider different options. We might call this simple thinking, fast thinking. But there are different ways of thinking, and another way is slow thinking, critical thinking. But what's the difference? Well, think about the last time you made a big, important purchase. Maybe when you bought a car or a large, expensive piece of technology, or even a house or a place to live. When you did that, you had to weigh up all the various options. You sought advice from people you could trust, and people with more expertise about the matter at hand than you had. You weighed up the strengths and weaknesses of the various options, and finally made your decision based on an accumulation and investigation of the evidence. In this case, you were thinking critically. You'll be thinking like that now, and it will be very important for the work you'll be doing. However. There's a big difference between thinking alone and thinking critically in the company of others. Some of the other people in the group will hold very different views to yours. Some will claim to know a great deal. You're also likely to hear presentations from external people, or explore websites, or read documents prepared by experts who claim to have expert knowledge. So, how do you know if you are thinking critically? Here's one strategy for checking if you are. Let's call it six modes of questioning. These six ways of asking questions are designed to help the group assess the information it will receive, to help the group think critically and make an informed decision together. The first point is about clarity. If a statement is vague or fuzzy, you can't tell if it's accurate or relevant. You might want to ask, can you elaborate? Can you give me an example? Can you be more specific? The second point is about accuracy. A statement can be clear but inaccurate. You might want to ask, is that really true? How can we verify that? Can you show me the data that supports your argument? The third point is about relevance. A statement can be clear, accurate and precise, but it may be irrelevant to the issue. You'll ask, how is that related to this issue? Is it relevant for this location at this point in time? The fourth point is about depth. Statements that lack depth fail to deal with the complexities of the issue. And you'll ask, does that address the complexity of this issue? Can you give me more details in another context? 
as your argument being peer reviewed. The fifth point is about breadth, an argument that considers only one viewpoint but ignores other perspectives lacks breadth. You might want to ask, what other points of view might we be missing? What do others say about this? Who has reviewed this argument and offered a contrary viewpoint? And the last point, the sixth point, is about logic. If a combination of thoughts is mutually supporting and makes sense and the thinking is logical, you might want to ask, how is it possible to be both X and Y? Do those two statements contradict each other? You said A, but also B, but both do not seem possible. So that's a very quick summary of what critical thinking is, and we hope you find it useful for your joint decision making today. Okay, ma'am. Thanks, ma'am, for this. Yeah. So I am done with my presentation now, and uh, I would be happy to answer any further questions that you might have. I would like to thank you again for all your support and it was been very uh, interactive. I was very motivated to see the chats and messages. So thanks for that. And um, yeah, if there are any further questions or something, do let me know or um, yeah. Yeah, first of all, uh, my heartfelt thanks to you, sir. The session is full of zeal and valuable session. Uh, the questions given by you like uh, three critical thinking skills and uh, the disposition towards critical thinking to train our brain and uh, giving examples about the Edward de Bono lateral thinking at six thinking hats, use of different key uh, critical thinking skills which enhances us such as how we have to observe, analyze, interfere, communicate and how to solve problems. Thank you sir, thanks a lot. Thank you ma'am. Uh, I request the participants that they can unmute them both and uh, any questions queries are there that you can ask. I gave an option to unmute you all. You can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask for this critical thinking, parallel thinking, and, and lateral thinking. Are these uh, they are same? Uh, sir, um, they are not uh, the same. Uh, they have a slight differences, but um, eventually they will lead to a problem solving approach. So the approaches could be different, but if you look at the bottom line, uh, there are three basic components into it. First, you describe a problem, second, you analyze the problem, and third is definitely you solve, you get a solution for a problem or you get an evaluation and intrinsic and get an evaluation. So all these approaches are different classifications of different, um, uh, like, uh, um, different scientists and different um, psychologists, but uh, certainly the bottom line is that they all lead to the same kind of uh, analyzed thinking process. So, sir, can we illustrate with an example that in this, uh, uh, this method is used in this case? Yes, that's what I, I showed you an example, right? The, the tea shop example, or I showed you this, um, um, for example, the vaccine example, that all these problems can be solved by this kind of particular kind of a thinking process. All have been solved by these uh, either of these three methods? Yes, well, certainly. To, to my knowledge, these are three methods which are used and utilize essentially to solve these kind of problems. Yeah, Suman Kumari. Yeah, Miss Jyoti, yeah, you can carry on. Okay, yeah. thank you, ma'am. Uh, sir, if uh, one is really short of time before taking a decision, uh, which um, important critical thinking um, um, tips can we apply before we take a decision? I mean, if we are really short of time and before we take a decision, and I would say two important critical thinking tips what you should take into mind is don't be biased and be logical. So if you are logical and not biased, most of the time we have actually done half the job of critical thinking. Okay. Thank so you, sir. 
Yeah. Okay. So that would be a very quickly you can actually take an informed decision if you're just being logical and not being biased about something. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Ms. Suman Kumari. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Harish Shetty. Yeah, you can carry on. Good evening, sir. I am Harish Shetty from Maharashtra. So my question is, how can we improve our problem-solving skills? Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Shetty. And that's uh, something very, uh, it's an important question that how can you improve your problem-solving skills? So. I would certainly uh, uh, say that uh, for to, in, to improve your problem solving skills, um, first of all, start uh, observing. This is something very important that when you observe, then only you have the data to analyze something. So you start observing, then of course, um, use the logic around it, uh, be more informed. So when you are taking an informed decision, you are logical around it, then certainly you have a um, uh, you, you can you can you can uh, yeah decide on and or, or do a problem solving. Yeah, so I would say yeah segregate it uh, yeah segregate these things and um, um, keep these things simple se segregated keep the things logical keep the things simple and if the problem is too complex it's a, always good to break it into smaller parts and then you will achieve a better solution. If any problem we can't solve, uh, is it better to solve some other problem and then come to that? Sorry, sir, your voice was. Uh, can you come, tell me a question again? Suppose if we are approaching a very complex problem, after mm -hmm. multiple attempts also, if we are not able to solve that problem, then uh, how should we go about it? Yes, sir, that's a very common uh, thing that, uh, of course, by multiple attempts, we are not able to solve a problem. Then uh, I would say that uh, we have to break the problem into small pieces and start solving it piece by piece. So then first you have to, when you break the problem into small pieces, you should decide on priority. Which is the priority, on what, what, what is the priority? So we should solve problem and priority should not be based on the need. Priority is based on the logic. So if the logically, if you think this is a priority, right? So for example, if I am buying a dress, my problem is that I don't have a right dress. Now it has multiple components. It has a shirt, it has a trousers, it has a suit, it has a socks, and it has a cap also. So now if I think my problem is that I should be dressed up properly. So what should I buy first? What should I improve first? Should I immediately buy a cap? And I have limited money. My problem is I have limited money. So I would say that a cap, logically, cap is not required right now for a great dressing. I would cut down the budget on cap. And rather buy a shirt and buy a trouser first. That is a must. That's a priority for dressing. I should have a good shirt and a trouser. And then I would go for the next step. Shoes are something which is visible. So I should wear a shoe also. Unfortunately, if I'm not able to purchase the socks, fine. Uh, I, I would then I would go for um, yeah, this kind of uh, and, uh, that uh, yeah. Then I would. Uh, so you can always compromise and then solve this problem. And eventually, when I have more money, I will buy a socks and I will buy a cap also and eventually I will be able to solve it. So you have to break the problem and solve it into installment if you are not able to attempt it. But uh, sitting on a problem is definitely not a solution. Yeah. Yeah, sir, uh, so shall we end the session, sir? I think I'm from my side, I have done with my... Uh, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> So, thank you sir, thanks a lot. Uh, your words and suggestions makes us to learn, empathize and understand uh, and also which helps us to make, uh, to take and make good and right decisions uh, to work uh, effective with our team, leadership and as well as thinking laterally and to be happy in our life. Thank you sir, thanks a lot. Thank you ma'am and I would like to once again thank all the participants for your valuable time. And your uh, and your motivation. So it was very nice interacting with you. And I wish it was not COVID, then we would have a better live, more live session, or more live audience. So hopefully next time uh, uh, we will have a different platform where we can essentially interact much more. So yeah. thank you very much for it. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah.
I extend my generous thanks to Dr. Vasudha Devanathan, Assistant Professor, Department of Biology, Isaac Tirupati, Dr. B. Usha, former Dean and uh, Head of SV Vedic University, Tirupati, Dr. D. R. Pratima Roy, Professor and Head of Department of English, St. Joseph's UG and PG College for Women, Dr. K. Sunita Reddy, Professor and HOD of SNH Department, SV Engineering College. My unfinished thanks to our resource persons, Dr. P. Madhrima Reddy, CEO and Founder and Entrepreneur, Peak Performance International Trainer and Love Inspire International Training and Solutions LFP. And special thanks to Dr. Ambari Saxena, Center for Sponsored Research and Consultancy, IIT Tirupati. My sincere thanks to our principal, to my principal, Dr. T. Kalpalatharity, for encouraging and supporting us. And my heartfelt and special thanks to all the participants for their active participation. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, dear participants, feedback link is posted in the chat box. And uh, tomorrow, uh, I'd like to uh, announce one thing, that tomorrow we're going to have a session on the topic Ardent Astuteness, that is on Emotional Intelligence, by Dr. B. Usha, former Dean and HOD of HNS Department, SV Vedic University, Tirupati. And uh, also on the topic Goal Setting by Dr. K. Sunita Reddy, Professor and HOD of SNH Department, SV EC, Tirupati. Thank you to all the participants. So tomorrow we'll meet at 10 o'clock. Feedback link is posted in the chat box and as well as in the WhatsApp group. I request all the participants to please fill the feedback form. The participants who fill the feedback form, they can read the session. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Can I lead, lead the meeting now? Yeah, yeah yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.